JimWilliamsForMetalRules.com and joining me today in Austin, Texas is the German Metal Commandos Primal Fury. How are you guys doing today? Thank hot. you very much. Very awesome. hot, very hot, <laughs> sweating. I need a shower desperately now. <laughs> so tonight's the final night of your current U.S. tour and this has seen some memorable performances. Uh, Metal Mike got up and jammed on stage with you guys. You've been bringing Pamela Moore on stage every night. Uh, what have been some of uh, your favorite memories from this current tour? Oh, it's so many new inspiration and so many new cities we never been before. It's all overwhelming. The most important thing for me is that uh, the fans in America who joined the, the shows were very enthusiastic, showed passion, were loud, and that was the most exciting thing for us. So. We had not one show where the, the fans were not going crazy, and this is this is really good. In a recent uh, concert you guys had in New York City, you dedicated the song Fighting the Darkness to the immortal Ronnie James Dio. Uh, would you guys like to publicly comment on what Ronnie meant to you as both a fan and as a performer? Especially as me, uh, for me as a vocalist, Ronnie James Dio really influenced me a lot in the 80s when I got into metal. And I mean, he was one of the masters of voices, and uh, he will be missed. And I know this, he's going to rest in peace and rest in peace running. So on your latest album, 16.6, uh, you introduced your, your newest guitarist, Magnus Carlsen, who also did two, two guitar solos on New Religion. How did you find Magnus and what made you decide on bringing him into the band? Magnus is a longtime friend of mine. We wrote songs even before he thought about joining Prime of Fear and I know how good he is on stage and in the studio. So as uh, we came to the point that Stefan Leibing, our longtime guitarist, want to concentrate on his job and his family instead of traveling the world, I recommended Magnus to Ralph and we both agreed that it could be a good addition to the to the to the band. But uh, uh, at the moment, uh, Magnus is not here. You might know that he's father of twins and he stayed with his wife, but Magnus will join us next week when we play with Kiss and Slayer and Motorhead in, in France. will be the first gig that he rejoins the band. Wow, what a lineup. So, like you were saying, over the years in Primal Fear, it's kind of been musical chairs with your guitar players, um, Tom Nauman, Kenny Walter, who's currently rejoined, um, Alex Byrod. Is there an open door policy? And if so, could you ever see working with Stefan again? Um, I think the theme with Stefan is over from his side. I mean, he, he, he enjoyed to do the family life and to do the life he, he likes to. And of course, this has got nothing to do with personal things. We are still friends and stuff, <laughs> but I think he just went to making music worldwide. He's still, he's still made doing music, and we left the door open maybe to come com compose a song together again, but maybe, but not on stage anymore. I mean, uh, I think this uh, he he closed with it with, with with this, and I think he's ready to finish with it. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's talk about um, the early days of the band, uh, Ralph. I know you had the the priest audition back in the day. You left Gamma Ray and. Um, Matt, you, you at Center. When, when you guys formed Primal Fear, was the idea just to do a one-off and see what happened, or was it commi committed and serious going into the project? First of all, I did an audition for Judas Priest. I was on the short list, but I never got invited. Second is that, of course, I prepared myself for the possible job, and that's the reason why I made the Judas Priest cover band. And uh, there was one occasion where the original guitarist player of this band couldn't come and the bass player couldn't come to make a gig and that's the reason why I asked Matt and Tom to join in for, for a jam, to, to jam some Judas Priest songs. And after this I joined Sinner in the studio and sung some lines for them at, for the albums and we got closer and closer friends and Matt came up to me and said, hey Ralph, you can't not just you can't just sit around and do nothing, let's do something together. So we composed four songs send them to Japan because they were waiting uh, for for me to do something. JVC record label was waiting for me to do something back then and we immediately had a contract and we were in good face that even European co companies then were hunting us. This is a good uh, good position. You know? <laughs> so it was really lucky when we started. And when you um, released your debut album in 1998 on Nuclear Blast and you introduced the eagle imagery on the album cover, what, what would you say the eagle imagery symbolizes to you guys as a band? 
Oh, well, first, that was an idea of, of our friend Stefan Lohmann, who uh, did the cover artworks, the first uh, couple. And he listened to the music and he came up with the idea and we liked it. The fans liked it too, so everything was cool. And so when you guys, a year later, did the Jaws of Death album, <coughs> added a full-time second guitar player, how were you guys performing live prior to, to adding a second guitarist? No, no, he was there from the beginning. Okay. So we recorded the studio album as a, a full piece, mm -hmm. the first, and before we did the first show we ever did, Stefan Leibing joined the band as a second guitarist. So we know that this music needs two guitars, so we were looking for a guitarist out of uh, who is coming from our area where we live in Stuttgart, uh, and that was the point. Stefan joins the band actually very, very short after the album was released, and we did our first tour. And on your your next one, the real aggressive ass kicker, one of my favorite Primal Fear albums, Nuclear Fire. I remember at the time that came out being re really well received by fans and a lot of critics were making comparisons to the Painkiller record. Was the Priest influence on that uh, something on your part that you guys kind of decided you wanted to... No. No, just... no, never. Never ever. It was just that, that uh, 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 Henny was new in the band. Uh, we were all fired up. That was a time we were we were really really hot and and right. We wrote I think 30 songs or something. Picked up the the 12 best songs we thought it is, and I think the album is still one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah and and we never we never think uh, on, on on Judas Priest. We never. So I think it's Ralph's voice has some some things which are very similar to Rob Halford's voice so in, in the, the high notes and, and, and the screams and stuff like that so there are similarities but uh, I think music wise uh, we never 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 uh, had Judas Priest in our mind it's just coming out of the, the flow yeah. and so the, the next record you guys did Black Sun you recorded here in Texas at Sonic Ranch Studios and that studio is reportedly haunted. Did you guys encounter any paranormal activity during your stay there? What are some of your memories from the Black Sun sessions? Uh, we ordered a, a soccer game via pay-per-view <laughs> and watched it at 6 in the morning and well, keep, the, the, keep, the, keep the whole studio alive because our team was, was, was playing. That was great. That was yeah. one of my memories. The other one, it was dry like hell was there. Dry. So the nose was bleeding nose, after three days. This was this was unbelievable. Totally different climate to to uh, where we live. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's good that we only mixed the album and we didn't have to do any more like singing or stuff. It would be too dry there. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, but it was a was a, we had a great time there. We had a great time overall. Uh, it was uh, nice to remember this 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 move, but. I don't think we will go there again. Uh -huh. So it doesn't make sense to to fly around the world. So in the meantime, we have nice options in our uh, living area that we don't have to fly to Texas anymore hmm. uh, to record an album, but to place. And I guess between that time and, and your next album, you guys did the, the Metal Gods tour. Uh, five or six dates here in, in the States and then um, actually eight eight and then when it was time for Devil's Ground you guys brought in Randy Black I guess he was already in the band before that album right? He did. Yeah, he, he played, came in for the Metal Gods tour. He played tour. the Metal Gods yeah. tour because our drummer was uh, uh, Klaus was not able to do this tour because uh, he has a job he, he needs to, to, to work and that was always a problem and uh, Randy was recommended from, from Stefan Leibing. Yeah? Stefan Leibing recommended Randy. Uh -huh. And we started working with him, and he was really, really a great drummer. So, as the time was right, Randy joined the band and later. Were you guys familiar with his work in Annihilator prior to that? Or, I mean, it must have been tough for you guys to bring in a new guy with Klaus in the band so long at that point. Or? Yeah, but, you know. People are changing, music is changing, so uh, uh, every band who is longer together than 10 years will lose a member sooner or later. Actually, he convinced us on the tour as he kicked our butts each and every night with a good drumming, so. Yeah. yeah. 
So we got to know him, and he, he's pro. He, he just learned the songs quick and did the tour with us. And this is a good sign in the first place. On Seven Seals, uh, I've always thought that the, the sound on that was more epic or grandiose than you know some of the more aggressive material that followed that. Did, were you kind of trying to de define the Primal Fear sound more um, as a lineup on, on that record, like in the songwriting process for Seven Seals? I think we're very passionate mu musicians and, uh -huh. and uh, it would be not for us uh, uh, satisfying enough to make another album like Devil's Ground. So we were looking for something different to have uh, our sound reloaded with some some more uh, uh, special stuff we didn't do in the past, like, like orchestra arrangements, starting with that point, making our music a little bit more dramatic, more epic, uh, and still being primal fear from the, from the basic guitar work and of course the vocal lines of Ralph. Uh, but production-wise, we 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 thought the time is right to look a little bit over the bridge and doing some things we haven't done before. Whose idea was it to do the center cover? Did you want to take a stab on vocals on that one, or how did that come up? Well, the, the center cover. Question of honor. Seals? So? Question of Honor is, is on Seven Seals. I saw it. It was Matt coming up with it, but but the thing is, we played it before uh, live together, uh -huh. and I always I always like this song, and, and it also suits my voice. So that's the reason why. We so New Religion was your your first album for Frontiers Records, and you had a duet with Simone Simons from Epica on Every Time It Rains. Did that kind of uh, open the door for possibilities working with female vocalists like you're doing now with Pamela Moore? Will there be more of that in the future? No, it was just an idea to do something new uh -huh. and different. We, we didn't have done in the past. It was always Ralph uh, and part-time me singing something. So then we go and said, what what, what we haven't done in the past? So uh, then I come up with the idea and Ralph liked the idea and, and Ralph could choose whatever he first wants, of all, wants to sing with. Yeah, first of all, the song offers this, Every Time It Rains offers this duet. And uh, that's the reason I, I was listening to Epica pretty much at that time, and I uh, really liked Simone's voice. And I thought uh, this would be perfect for Every Time It Rains. And it was perfect. I mean, everybody likes it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a great song. So let's talk about the here and now. Uh, Ralph, you're working on material for an upcoming solo album. How different is the material going to be than the metal you're playing in Final Fear right now? Actually, it's pretty much more uh, diverse. It's more var variety, you can say. Uh, Matt and uh, Magnus and Sander from After Forever. Alex, for example, also helps me. So uh, we got really good material together right now. But you can't say uh, let's just copy and do the same thing like the Prime of Fear. That would be somehow not really uh, clever to do. So there's more diversity. There's pretty much balance, but also pretty pretty hard songs on it. So it's different, but it's something special. Very cool. Yeah. So Matt, uh, you're working with Amanda Somerville and Michael Kisk. Uh, tell me about that. <clears throat> that was an idea of the record company, of Frontiers Records, that they came up and said uh, they want to have um, an album with Michael Kiske and the female singer. Uh -huh. um, and uh, if I'm interested in writing the songs and producing the album, and uh, we started writing songs and it came up well, so I said, yeah, I'm doing the job. The album is uh, uh, finished when I come home. We're starting the mix of the album. We did two video clips for the album. And I think it's a pretty good album. And uh, it's it's more rocking and uh, more a heavy rock album uh, like uh, Michael's previous album. So he's getting back to rock again. And Amanda is... Uh, Outstanding, unbelievable, fantastic voice, professional, no mistakes, great woman. Love to work with her. How far along in the production is it? Huh? How far along in the production is it? You see it coming out soon. Uh, September twenty second. Wow. Yeah. When I come home, mm -hmm. I'm starting with the mix of the album, finish the album, 
and uh, then it goes into, pro into production work. So I think uh, the album is ready. We have a, a, a listening session lined up for the international music media in July 23rd, I think. So I have to be ready on July 23rd with everything. You got another center record ready to go? Yes. This is first, then Ralph it is coming. And then Primal Fear is then coming. Another again. Primal Fear. No, no, Ralph is coming first. And then, then touring. Then again. Sinner. Then touring in Europe for the for the live city and the DVD. And in between I have doing a new Sinner album. And I have another album to produce for uh, Frontiers Records. It's for Bobby Kimball and Jamie Jameson. They do an album together. I will produce it. So I have a lot of work. Uh, but better have a lot of work than not work, <laughs> of course. So I'm, I'm keeping myself busy, and uh, then at the end of the year we will start uh, uh, thinking about the new Prime of Fear album, writing songs. Then Ralph's release of the solo album in January. I don't know what happens then. We will look what happens with the solo album. Maybe you never know. Maybe we, we do in we do in two or three Ralph Shaper solo dates or something like this, so we're open. Let's see what... Very cool. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk metal with me today. Have you guys got any last words for your fans watching at home before we wrap this up? Well, it's the last day of the tour today, and I just want to thank you all guys for supporting us so much on, the, on this tour. We had a blast. And uh, just keep supporting heavy metal. It's very, very important. I enjoyed that tour really, really much and uh, I thank the fans in the US and Canada for joining us and uh, giving us a good time. So I'm coming home with a great feeling. I'm, I'm not that exhausted, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to come back and this is always a great feeling when you, when you come home after, after four weeks of touring and traveling so many, many, many miles and you come in home and said, well, that was great. I will do this again. That's the best that can happen. Yeah. So, thank you, fans, for all your support. Love you. Eternity.